I turn uh, Ms. Marmonici, Marmonici, thank you. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to start by responding to my, my colleague and uh, expressing extreme concern about the notion of placing everybody in the same category and assuming that anyone that comes from a particular country or has a particular color of skin shares certain beliefs. I just, I think that's hugely problematic. And uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you for holding this uh, important hearing. Thank you to our witnesses. We know anti-Semitism has been a threat for centuries. Uh, Ms. Burdett, you talked about prevention. I want to note that in my home state of Oregon, in 2019, the legislature required education about the Holocaust. They just updated that legislation earlier this year to include a required curriculum about Jewish history and culture. Those are obviously steps in the right direction, but now post October 7th is undeniable that we are experiencing an enormous and concerning rise in anti-Semitism and other hateful and discriminatory rhetoric, especially on college campuses, but not limited to college campuses, I might add. Sadly, in too, often, uh, too often in these situations, it's become violent and threatening way beyond constitutional free speech protections. I understand this is a hearing about anti-Semitism, but it's important to recognize there's also been unprecedented surge in anti-Muslim and anti-Arab bias and hate. There's a significant uh, dangerous threat to a mosque that's in the district I represent. Um, that's wrong, too. I hope we can all agree that every student has the right to be on a campus where they not only feel safe, but are safe, especially when discussing and debating important uh, and controversial topics. That's not happening today. We heard fr uh, from a, a student about that. We know anti-Semitism has repeatedly reared its ugly head in the form of hateful rhetoric and disgusting images and symbols, and now it's back in levels we have not seen in our lifetime. We need a unified, empathetic and appropriately nuanced approach from this committee in Congress. Title VI gives us the opportunity to do that. I want to note that after 9-11, our federal government did not do enough uh, to protect Muslims amid an, a rise, um, amid an alarming rise in Islamophobia and violence toward and hate crimes toward Muslim Americans. We can learn from that and realize that we have to take action. I'm grateful for the rapid response by the Department of Education's Office for Civil Rights, OCR, to remind colleagues, uh, colleges of their obligations to protect Jewish students, Muslim students, students of all faiths against discrimination. I'm also very grateful uh, that OCR has expedited an update to its discrimination complaint form, so hopefully campuses can access the resources and support they need as soon as a discriminatory act occurs. I'm following up on Mr. Courtney's question, Ms. Burdett, there's a push among my Senate colleagues led by HELP Committee uh, Chairman Sanders to include a 27% funding increase for the Department's uh, Office of Civil Rights and a supplemental appropriations bill. I support this and hope that a similar bipartisan effort takes shape in the House because of the bipartisan, bipartisan consensus. Uh, that we're hearing about what's addressing what's happening on college campuses. So, Ms. Burdett, um, how could OCR use these additional resources from Congress to fulfill its responsibility and protect civil rights of students and combat any faith, race, or ethnicity-based discrimination? And would you please also, I know you wanted to respond to, uh, to Mr. Grothman's question as well. Well, I'll start with the Department of Education. I mean, I I'm an advisor to professionals on campuses, and complaints are going to go up. Um, Congresswoman, if tomorrow you were a senator and you got to only bring your House staff, it would limit how effective you could be. And so this is just common sense that we need to capacitate this organization. Because later, members of Congress will criticize that office for not moving quickly enough and for having a backlog. Um, and I just, as I can't be a Jewish person and not remember that we were viewed as foreigners who were dangerous. Two thirds of the American public in 1938 believed that Jews in Germany were responsible for the persecution that the Nazis were bringing on them. And we weren't allowed to come here because people believed we would be German spies and we would be a fifth column in this country. And so hate comes from everywhere, and so do acts of good people. And so that kind of profiling, it's not backed up by the data. You're members of Congress. You can access information about people who come to this country. 
my understanding is that they commit crime at lower rates than our own kids. So thank you for that opportunity. Thank you. And, and Mr. Chairman, as I yield back, I request unanimous consent to enter into the record statements from the Council on American Islamic Relations Care condemning Islamophobic actions on college campuses in Maryland and Texas, and importantly, an article from the Washington Post titled, Colleges Braced for Anti-Semitism and Violence, It's Happening. Thank you, and I yield back. No objection.